In our projects, we may need to include a still image for a multitude of reasons. You can use something called the Ken Burns effect, or we could just do a simple push-in, which looks something like this. However, there's not much excitement there, and if it's overused, it loses its impact. What if I said there was an effect that will make your image more engaging, and we'll do something like this? Once again, here it is before, and here it is after, where it doesn't just look as if we're zooming in on our footage. Let's find out how to do this. I already have my footage on the timeline. Let me show you the way that you would normally do it and the way that we're going to do it using this effect. So I'm going to select our piece of footage here, come up to our inspector, and you could obviously come in here, leave the zoom at this amount, set a keyframe, come over to the end, and then we could move this in like this come back here and you'll notice that it slowly zooms in. We don't actually have to manually do that. We can also use something over here called dynamic zoom. So let me remove the keyframe from what we did there. And then I'm going to come over to our option here for dynamic zoom. I'll expand that. And on the left hand side here, there's an option here that says dynamic zoom. If you're not familiar with this option, essentially what it's doing is this green area is what you look at at the beginning of your clip. And then the red area is what you're looking at, obviously, at the end. You can choose this option here to swap. And in this particular case, it's doing exactly what we did before with the keyframes. There are these options here where you can ease in and ease out. And essentially, if you choose linear, what that will do is move everything at a constant rate, ease in, it will be smoother at the beginning, ease out, obviously at the end. And for both, it's ease in and ease out. I'm moving back over to the left-hand side, clicking this so we don't see that overlay. And now let's watch our footage using that option. Clearly this is more engaging than just a static photo, but we can do a lot better. Right now I'm going to disable that dynamic zoom. Now I'm going to click on effects and choose this option right here, 3D photo projector and we'll drag that right on to our footage. I downloaded that from Motion Array. I'll leave a link in the description below and more on them in a little bit. What we're looking at here is essentially a box. And the reason we want to do this is because this will actually put our image in 3D space and maybe not actual 3D space, but what we're intending to do is project our image onto the box and it will function as if we are in 3D space. We could do something similar to this in Fusion, but this makes it a lot easier. To make this a little bit easier to understand, the red areas are the ceiling and the floor. The green areas would be the wall of our box, and the blue area is essentially our vanishing point. And I'll explain how that functions shortly. That's what we're going to focus on first. If we head over to Effects, we have this option here. If we ever want to see our original footage, we just click on this button that says Edit Mode, and now we can see our footage. Right now, we can determine that these walls on the side aren't high enough because the walls actually come up to here. Our vanishing point is the door, and our blue area is a little bit low, so we're going to have to adjust that a little bit. And of course, the ceiling and the floors are encroaching on the walls, so we'll have to make that adjustment too. So the first thing I want to do is make the area in the middle, that blue area, a little bit smaller. As you'll notice, obviously, that blue area is larger than the door that we're trying to put this over. Under 3D settings, I'm going to adjust a box size. That appears to be the right width. As you'll notice, it's a little out of place. So now I'm going to adjust its position. The X position adjusts everything left to right. So that's the one that I'm going to adjust in this case. And I can see down here that our blue area is on the floor. So let's adjust Y also to bring it up. The next thing that I'm going to adjust is the ceiling rotation and the floor rotation. First, let's work on the floor rotation. A lot of this you'll have to do by eye. You just want it to appear that this grid realistically appears as if it's actually on the floor. Right now, that doesn't appear to be the case. It's not covering the floor back there, and it looks as if it's heading up towards us in the sense that it appears that it's moving in a vertical position. So what I'll do is adjust this rotation just a little bit more. And that looks more realistic. It appears that that grid is actually on the floor. The right hand side appears to be okay for the most part, but over here we're still seeing a little bit of that. So now we can actually move the position to the left so we can adjust our X position again. Our right hand side appears to be okay. If I uncheck edit mode, 
it appears that the green wall is following the wall in our photo. What we have to do now, because I can still see green on this side, is move our left wall rotation. So let's make an adjustment there. Of course, we can continue to try to dial this in, but for all intents and purposes, this is going to function the way that we want it to. The next step, once we have everything in position, is to head over to animation. As with a dynamic zoom, we have the options for linear, easing, and custom. At first, this may appear more confusing than it actually is, but essentially what you're doing here is setting a starting point and an ending point. Let's say you want to start right from here, which is our original footage and our original zoom level. You don't have to make any adjustments to the top here where they all say start. All you'll have to do is come over here to the end and make your adjustments there. Let's uncheck edit mode, head to the end of our footage here. And the first thing that I'm going to adjust is the zoom end. And now you may notice why this differs from zooming in on an image, because now it appears as if we're moving through the box that I referenced earlier. What's happening is that our focus point, the door, isn't changing size, which is similar to what you would see in real life. If something's in the far distance, it doesn't necessarily change size. The closer you get, of course, it will start to change size. But what we're intending to do here is just do a small push in with these photos, and this just makes it look more realistic. So now let's watch through this footage and see how it looks. Before I continue, let me tell you a little bit more about where you can find effects along with a lot more assets that you can use for your video projects. Let's quickly talk about Motion Array. Motion Array is a one-stop website where you can find almost anything that you would need for your next video, whether it be music, stock footage, motion graphics, or DaVinci Resolve macros and templates. The thing I like most about Motion Array is that it saves you a lot of time. Could I create those myself or could I show you how to create those? Sure, but why spend time recreating those from scratch when you can just download the templates right from the Motion Array website? Do you need an intro or outro to your video? Some call out titles, transitions, or even some lower thirds? They have all of those over on the website. If you're watching this and you have Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, they still have options for you over on the website including all the sound effects and stock footage. I can personally attest that Motion Array has saved me time, and I know that you'll like them too. There are even some free options on the site if you want to give them a try. Check my link in the description below, sign up for Motion Array, and add some amazing production value to your videos. As I mentioned before, we can obviously change this from linear to easing, and then we can choose our in and out. Maybe we can start with no easing in, and then when we ease out, we can use this. But without getting into the specifics, you can have a play with those and determine which one works best for you. We can also adjust where we start and end. So let's say at the beginning, we want it to start maybe off to the side a little bit. So let's adjust our X and we'll move it to the left a little bit. And then at the end, I will move the X in the other direction. You can't see that right now because we're still at the beginning of the clip. The other thing that we can do is adjust our rotations. Let me make a quick adjustment there also. You may notice now that we can see black area on the outside of our image. So what we can do is adjust the zoom. So let me zoom in on the start here. And so what we've done so far is we've changed our starting point. We've also rotated it a little bit, but we didn't adjust the rotation on the end. So it's going to rotate back to the original position. We've adjusted where it starts in the X position, which is left to right. I didn't adjust the Y, but that would be your up and down. So now let's see what that does. We do have two other options, which is our image settings, which adjust its location. You can adjust the size of the actual image. Now this isn't adjusting it in 3D space. This is just adjusting the image. And the X and Y would move it left and right and up and down. The size obviously would adjust the size. And then we have an option here for text. We can come in here and maybe I can type in post. And that will put 3D text in our environment. If I move forward a little bit, as I mentioned, it adjusts with our footage. And of course, it's in a specific location in Z space. So if I move this Cam Z static and let's move that forward just a little bit. Now our text is becoming a lot larger because we're actually getting closer to it. 
The other nice thing about the way that this text is set up is that you'll see a reflection of our footage on the side of the text. I'm not going to cover the text option in this video to any great extent, but you'll notice all the options that you have down here. You can choose the font style, the size, the extrusion depth, which is essentially how deep this portion of it is, where the reflection is. You can change the color, of course, so maybe we want it to be a little bit lighter. Let's change this down here. And you may not need this for your footage, but I'm glad that they included it just as an additional option so you didn't have to do this yourself. For this particular footage, we're going to approach things a little bit differently. As you'll notice in this photo, which by the way, I also downloaded from Motion Array, there are no walls. And for all intents and purposes, there's no ceiling either. You may look at the clouds and think that those could be on the ceiling, but essentially what we want to do is have this vanishing point be something in the distance. And we don't necessarily want those clouds to get closer to us. We just want portions of the road to get closer to us. Let me show you what I mean. If we head back to the effects section, we'll drag our effect onto this footage. Now we can make our adjustments. Obviously the first thing that we want to do is change our horizon. Right now this blue area is a little bit too high. The end of the road is back here. Uh, so let's go ahead and make the adjustment. I'm going to come over to position. Y is our up and down. So I'll make an adjustment on our Y. And that should be fine for what we need it for. Now before I adjust the rotation of the road, what I want to do is get those walls out of the way. So now we can really adjust the box size. We want those walls to be outside of our viewing image that we're looking at. So let's take the box size and really crank up the X. For the most part, it appears that these lines here are actually painted right on the road. I'm going to adjust the rotation just a little bit to see if we can improve that, or if not, we can just leave it where it is right now. So let's adjust the floor rotation. And I think that looks a little bit better. We initially had this right at 90 degrees. I adjusted it to 90.3, and that looks as if it's actually painted on the road. Maybe on the sides here, it looks like it's actually living there in the areas off to the side. So we can leave the rotation where it is right now. In order to take care of the ceiling, we can do one of two things. We can come in here and adjust the box size on the Y. Instead of me dragging to the right and slowly incrementing it, let me just type a number in here. And right now I've adjusted it to 1.5, but you may start to notice the problem is that now we're going to have to adjust our horizon line and make more adjustments. The quick solution that I have is just to adjust the ceiling to a different angle. So let me get back to where we were before. So instead of the ceiling coming towards us, as you may notice in our footage right here, I'm going to adjust the rotation to 180. So let's double click on this, type in 180. And now we're projecting our image onto the ceiling, which is now pointing straight up and down. I did have to make some additional adjustments. So this may look a little different and some of the settings have changed. I inadvertently left a setting on elsewhere, but now we're back in the same place. What we have to do now is come to the end of our selected clip down here, choose animation. And in order to see what we're doing, we're going to uncheck edit mode and I'm going to choose zoom end so we can determine where the end point is. And that looks pretty good. So let's watch the raw footage. So you may notice that there's a little more parallax now. Things that are closer to you are moving quicker than things farther away. Of course, this is a lot different than just zooming in on the image where everything moves at the same speed. If you're interested in learning about other cool DaVinci Resolve effects or how to become a better colorist, subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when my next video comes out. Why not have a peek at one of the videos on your screen right now? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.